everyone, Liam here. Welcome to this week's YouTube video. After posting up my Gilliman model that I painted for a client, I've had a huge amount of requ requests on how I painted the sword. So I decided to do a YouTube video on it. So I hope, as always, this is helpful. If you've got any questions, queries, feedback, leave them in the comments below. If the video is helpful, if you do like it, please hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe. It means a huge amount to me. But enough of my rambling. Here we go. So you can see the sword is black at the moment. That's just the color that I primed this model. Now, what we need to do is we need to put a bright base color on the flames themselves, because if we were to go with our yellow and put yellow over black, it's gonna start going very green and it's gonna be very difficult to cover. So the flames themselves and the area around in the flames, we need to do a couple of coats of white and get a really good solid white down. I'm using Vallejo model color white. The thing to know with this particular process is the color underneath your paints will influence the color that they come out at. When we're using things like yellows and oranges and reds, they're heavily influenced by what color is underneath them. Once we've got the white down, um, I'm using P3 Cygnus Yellow. This is the best yellow that I've found. It's amazing. Uh, it's really vibrant and it covers quite well. So we're going over all of the white with the yellow. Now the idea with this is, is the yellow is the brightest part of the flame. So closer to the source of the flame, the brighter it's going to be and the more vibrant it's going to be. So in this case, the source of the flame is coming from the blade. So the further the flames go away from that source, the darker they're gonna get. Now you can see at the moment, I'm now painting orange on. This is Vallejo, no it's not, it's Games Workshop Fire Dragon Bright. This is quite a nice orange to be honest with you and it thins fairly well. So first of all I put a very opaque layer <clears throat> over the parts of the flames that are quite far away from the source. So the flames that actually extend away from the blade because we're going to be going darker with those. And then what we're going to do is we're going to thin this Fire Dragon Bright down. So originally the paint that I put on was actually straight out of the pot. Now we're adding a small amount of water. So we've got equal, equal amounts of water to equal amounts of paint. And the idea with this is I'm painting the flames, but I'm leaving the recesses. I want the recesses of this flame area. I want those yellow. That's really important. You see I blacked out a part of the part of the blade. That's just because at this point I feel like I'm going, I want a nice dark red there. Now with the what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just going over the area of yellow that's on the blade. So this the flat of the blade that's currently yellow, I need to start darkening those. Because the idea with that is is the flat of the blade that's yellow is going to transition to a very dark red and it's gonna transition into the flat of the blade. So what we're doing is I'm glazing over this orange. So this orange is very thin. It's probably three parts water to one part paint. I'm removing the excess orange from my brush. So I don't have a huge amount on my brush. I'm gradually building up that orange tone. So I'm moving from the yellow to the orange. What this does is eventually we're gonna go from orange to dark red, from dark red to the color of the blade, so black. So this is really important. So it's, this is probably the slowest part of the model, but it's, it's the most important because we need that gradual transition. And what I would say though, is if, you're, if your paint is very thin and you're removing a lot of the excess, the idea is that although we're gonna be doing lots of little glazes to build this up, it should dry very quickly, which means you can keep working it but you need to make sure the paint is dry before you paint over it again. With the flames themselves that are coming off the blade, further away from that blade we get, the darker we're gonna go. So at the moment you can see that they're going to orange, we're going to push that to a red. So this is the Games Workshop Corn Red. For anyone who knows me, I absolutely love the GW Reds. With this, what we're gonna do is the further towards the out of the peak um, or the outer peaks of the flames, we're gonna go to this corn red. I have thinned it down to probably two parts water to one part paint, so it's quite thin. So I wanna build up that gradual progression, so I am still doing a glaze. Um, my paint's quite thick, you could do it a lot thinner. You could be a lot thinner with this paint if you're a bit less experienced when it comes to getting this nice smooth transition with a glaze. So if in doubt, 
thin your paint a little bit more. You'll just need to do more layers and then make sure you remove the excess. So you can see further out towards the end of these flames we get, the darker that they're going. So they go into this red. Also, what we want is obviously these flames, these sculpted flames that are on the actual blade itself. What I'm going to end up doing with this red as well, peak of the curves on the flames as they go in. You can see me painting them now. Those are also going to be red as well. So the, so the red is going to run along the length of the flames. And this just, what this does is that dark red picks out, it, it frames all of the shapes for the flame itself. So it stands out more and it looks very readable. So this is a really important part. Less is more here. You just need it so it shows the shape. By placing that red at the flowing shape of the flames, surrounded by the really bright yellow, clearly defines the shape of the of the flames themselves and it makes it readable. This is just it's really, really important. Having all of that really bright yellow around this red makes it pop. It gives readability to the blade. Now you can see I've obviously been working on the blade itself. The blade, I've been painting this uh, Games Workshop corn red over it. Now the thing is, that corn red is significantly darker on that blade compared to the flames themselves. That's because it's over a black base coat. This was the reason why I left black on the blade itself. Now to be fair, I'm going to make an adjustment and paint more white over in a second because I'm not happy with the size of the bright yellow areas but you see where I'm going with this the blade itself we can't leave the blade black and what's going to happen is is the further away from the source of the flames that we get the darker it's going to go so this is what I'm trying to do now so I'm going to skip ahead where I make the adjustment because this isn't working at this point so shameless plug time guys do apologize but it's got to be done if you do want to see more in-depth videos if you do want if you are interested in one-to-one -one tuition feel free to check out my patreon which has got the links in it below if you're interested in getting a centerpiece model painted for yourself this particular gilliman was a commission for a client feel free to get in touch with me all of the links are in the description below if you just want to support the channel in general as well it means a huge amount thank you everyone for your support seriously it means a lot so I've been playing this blade for a little while and what I realized was the glowing area is not bright enough and if I want to make that larger, if I paint yellow over all of this, it's going to take me loads of coats of paint, which I don't want to do. So to extend the yellow area, to make it the, the bright area much wider, I'm painting on that base, that white base coat that I did previously. That just means it's much, much faster. If you put the white down and then paint the yellow over it, it's going to cover much better which is why there's a big chunk of white here right now. You can also see that I've painted the tip of the blade. Now, I want to point out with that, I'm going to I'm gonna go back and show you how I did that because the tip of the blade is a part of the, effectively the non-metal metallic steel blade. Um, and I'll show you how to do that after I've made this adjustment to it. So we're going to skip back a little bit on that one. So you can see me covering all of this white again with the P3 Cygnus yellow. This yellow is my brightest values my brightest color so if i want that vibrant yellow i need to start at the brightest because if you try and put this yellow over anything else even with the p3 cygnus yellow it's still going to be tinted by whatever you put it over because yellow and orange is just in a really they're, they're just really weak colors so start bright and push yourself darker so the priority here is now and this is where this blade becomes a little bit slow so i'm not gonna lie this blade probably took me maybe four hours yeah, probably between three and four hours. And this is where it really slows down. Because what we now need to do is we need to glaze. The, we need to create a transition from this yellow into the black of the blade. The only way we can do that really is by glazing orange over the yellow, which is what you can see me doing now. So I'm progressively making this yellow darker and darker towards the orange. When I've got it to the same orange as the fire bright fire dragon bright orange then i'm going to get the corn red and i'm going to glaze over i'm going to glaze with the corn red from the fire dragon bright into the corn red so the idea is we're using incredibly thin paint 
three or four parts water to one part paint, we're removing the excess from the brush. I'm starting my brush stroke in the brighter area and I'm moving it to the darker area. What that does is where we leave the, the strongest amount of paint is going to be in the area, in, in the darker area, so we can hide that little drop that gets left over. We're gradually going to build this up until we have a nice progression from the bright yellow all the way through to the dark of the blade. And we're doing that with the P3 Cygnus Yellow, Games Workshop Fire Dragon Bright, Games Workshop Corn Red. Final step is we really do need to push this to black. We need outside of the blade to be pushed to back black. And the reason for that is, is remember, the darker our areas surrounding something, the brighter it's going to look. So the actual black of the blade around this flame is what causes the flame to look so vibrant because we have such a dark area around it, it makes it pop so that's incredibly important and then we get this nice transition that you can see on the blade at the moment where it goes from really bright to really dark and if we would switch this to grayscale and remove the color the the amount of contrast that we have in value in our light and dark would be massively extreme it'd be so extreme and that's one of the reasons why this is so potent so I'm just going to skip back a little bit to the peak of the sword. So remember when I just said that we're glazing all the way to black? This is really important as well because what we do is if we have the black, when we when we put a highlight on the sword, we have a black area between the bright of the blade and the highlight on the sword. sword the actual highlight on the sword itself is really nice and easy. I mixed a grey and then put a very small amount of corn red into it. It made like this purpley red gray skip gray tone put it towards the peak of the blade because that's the only part of the blade that's not going to have flame on it and then once again glazing between the black and that gray mix now the really important thing to remember is do not do the peak of the blade brighter than the flames the flames need to be the brightest thing so do not go as bright as the flames with the reflection on the blade and then you can see that I pushed the dark spot with the transition point between the flames and the blade. And then I glazed over with incredibly thin paint, blue paint, some blue into the blade. So that creates a contrast in color. We've got a really strong blue. Well, we've got a very subtle blue which, and surrounding a very bright orange. So that blue was probably thinned down to six or seven parts water to one part paint. And I just went over the reflection at the tip of the blade and then I've added in edge highlights the edge highlights are really important for the blade because they give it shape they add frame but you can see how those edge highlights are tinted with blue this in this case it's e, it's Vallejo model color dark Prussian blue added into with with a little bit of white and I glazed over that onto the tip of the reflection and also I put it into my edge highlights. This is what creates readability of the blade. It's what makes the peak of the blade pop. Really important. And the thing is, what will happen is, is because blue and orange are contrasting colors, although I don't particularly understand the science of it, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to lie. What I do know is if we surround a color with its contrasting color, it will make it pop even more. So by having a subtle amount of blue surrounding the orange or the yellows and the orange, makes it far more vibrant it makes it pop much more and that's part of the illusion so the last final couple of steps to this blade we need to push the tips of the flames to not necessarily black but we're going to glaze over the tips of the flame with black red so this is Vallejo model color black with a small amount of red mixed in what this does is it creates because we add so much darkness to the flames themselves it makes the source of the flames look much much brighter we it does need to be small if we we put too much of this on it looks really weird and it just ends up looking black so don't go too far you far with it you just want the very tips and then with my I've got Vallejo model color white but I've also added white ink so it's really quite potent what I'm doing is in the deepest recesses this is like the creases I'm painting in white and the reason why I'm doing this, although the white looks proper funky when we put it in place, I think it's a little bit too much. What will happen is, because we've got this vibrant white, now going to paint over it with a very thin Cygnus yellow. That's going to give us a brighter yellow than we've already got. 
So I've got the P3 Cygnus yellow. I thinned it down to say one part water to one part paint and I'm gonna put a very thin layer over these little bits of white that you can see on the blade at the moment. And it's going to be quite subtle, but what it means is, is these little creased areas, these deepest recesses in this blade will look even brighter and you can see it there. And that's how we push those final little peaks. And that's it, that's the process for painting the sword for, for Gilliman, the blue man himself. As always, I hope this has been helpful. Questions, queries, feedback, that sort of stuff, leave them in the comments below. I will absolutely get back to you. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like it. Any interaction on YouTube is nothing but a good thing. So feel free. And thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you all later.